Mammals, such as humans, have one large occipital bone. Reptiles don't. They have many small bones in this region. Mammals, such as humans, have one large temporal bone. Reptiles don't. They have many small bones in the temporal region. Mammals, such as humans, have one large sphenoid bone, ethmoid bone, etc. Where did these large mammalian bones come from? Could they have evolved? Primitive reptiles alive today and ancestral rep reptiles in the fossil record possess many small bones in the occipital region. They are known as the basio-occipital, exo-occipitals, uh, post-parietals, tabulars, etc. The fossil record indicates that over long periods of time, these small bones fused to gradually form the single mammalian occipital bone, thus making the mammalian occipital bone a composite bone, a bone uh, formed by the fusion of many smaller bones. In mammals and in humans, embryological evidence suggests the same. The human occipital bone is formed as many small bones, the homologous structures to these uh, reptilian bones, fuse to form the one single composite occipital bone in mammals, including humans. Primitive reptiles alive today and ancestral reptiles from the fossil record possess multiple bones in the temporal region of the skull, primarily the squamosal and petrosal, but uh, more primitively other bones as well. In humans and in all mammals, there is a single temporal bone. This temporal bone also seems to be a composite bone formed by the fusion of multiple small bones. This is evident in the fossil record as bones gradually fuse together to form the temporal bone and in the embryological development of mammals including humans one can observe separate bony elements uh, those which correspond to the homologous regions and reptiles fusing to form the one composite temporal bone. So the temporal bone is also a composite bone formed by the fusion of many smaller bony elements from separate ancestral structures. Mammals and humans possess a single sphenoid bone. In reptiles and more primitive uh, vertebrates, this sphenoid region is composed of multiple separate elements. What the fossil record indicates is that these separate elements gradually fuse together to form the single sphenoid bone found in mammals, including humans. Embryological development suggests the same. In mammalian embryos and human embryos, multiple separate units, those corresponding to these homologous structures in reptiles, fuse together to form the single human sphenoid bone. Thus, the human sphenoid bone is a composite bone formed by the fusion of many smaller ancestral elements. There are other examples of this as well. In the human lineage, the two separate frontal bones fuse to be one. Multiple units uh, fuse together to make the ethmoid bone in humans. Ancestrally, there was a pair of vomer bones. These fused to make the one single vomer. Ancestrally, uh, there was a premaxillary bone which held the incisors, but in humans, this fuses to the maxillary bones. The two separate mandibles fuse to make one. The vertebrae are composite bones. Ancestrally, there were separate bony elements, a pair of neural arches, a pair of pleurocentra, and a pair of intercentra. These separate elements fuse to make the one single composite vertebrae, which we find in humans today. So in mammalian skeletons and in human skeletons specifically, we see multiple examples of composite bones which were formed by the fusion of smaller separate structures.